Hello, welcome to my video here for Fellowship of Christian Athletes. We're talking quiet time today. Uh, fun tidbit of information brought to you by Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And um, my name is Clint Daniels. I'm the faculty sponsor for FCA at Indian Trail Middle School. You can reach me uh, at the uh, addresses right here. And this is my personal blog that I write on there for teachers. Well, let's go ahead and start talking about this for quiet time. Hey, you know what? This is so cliche when you say it. Practice makes perfect. Uh, the best athletes, what do they do? they got to train hard. And um, you know what? The more you put in, the more you get out of it. Um, you think about the Olympics. These athletes train for four years to get to where they're at. They train so hard. You think about like Olympic swimmers swimming laps and laps and laps in a pool to, to get ready for that few events that they have there. For us... As Christian athletes, we have our quiet time is basically practice for Christians. And uh, you're going to be getting yourself better here. Look at this guy. He's teeing up five golf balls. He's cranking them out there. So what exactly is quiet time? Um, I personally define it as any way you find to further your way, relationship with God. Any way you do that. Um, and here's the thing. It's not going to be the same for everybody. Um, some scripture to back that up. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. This is basically saying we all have different types of gifts there. Uh, another one from Romans here. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is, get, is to exercise them accordingly. You know, we have different gifts. It says right there. And then finally, just as a body, though one is many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. We are... Uh, forming the large body of Christ and you know what somebody may be a hand and somebody else may be an elbow you know you're, you're all different parts of the body we're going to be doing different things to get there um, therefore we're all unique and we are all going to have different quiet times so how to set this up you know you got to pick a plan you know they're all going to be unique and I'm going to give you plenty of ideas through this uh, video here you got to pick a place <clears throat> pick up time that works for you, preferably a good time of day for you. For me, it's in the morning. My alarm goes off about 4.40, and I'm uh, feet on the floor at 5 a.m. I'm sipping my coffee, stretching my back out, and then I'm into my uh, my quiet time there. Uh, you got to have a place. If you don't have a place, you uh, you're, you're, it's not going to happen. You know, somewhere where you can concentrate. And then you got to, you know what? If you make an appointment with God, you got to commit to it. The cool thing is, you know, God is flexible. He, he is available 24-7. You can come to God any time of day you want. It's totally cool with Him. Uh, my advice to you, if you need to start a quiet time, you start small, but you go big later. Start small, but go big. Um, I think about Luke chapter 9, verses 23-24, which talks about uh, taking up your cross daily. The keyword there, like I say, is daily. It's right here. You need to be doing that. You know, it's uh, it does, he doesn't say take up your cross three times a week. He doesn't say take up your cross on Sundays when you go to church. It's daily. So eventually, you will be going big. Okay. I personally think that all quiet times should uh, should involve a couple things. Number one is prayer. Uh, one of my favorite verses for prayer is Jeremiah twenty nine twelve to thirteen it says, "Then you will call call upon me." And come pray, pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search me with all your heart. Great verse there. Uh, and secondly, you got to sprinkle some Bible in. I'm sorry, you got to have it. Uh, all scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, righteousness, that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. That pretty much just lays it on the line right there. That's from 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17. So let's talk about prayer. If you don't know how to pray, I'm going to recommend something for you. Sometimes I go, go for this one. It's called Acts. Um, Acts is a specific type of prayer for the first part. Acts means adoration. You just praise God. You like you adore him. Why, why do you adore him? You talk to him in that way. C is confession. You confess any sins that you've been having. T is Thanksgiving. You praise God and thank Him for all the blessings He's given you. And finally, the last one, 
supplication is uh, asking God for what he, he might be able to give you. You know, it's amazing how many of my prayers sometimes get wrapped, wrapped up and involved totally with the S part here, and I forget to do the ACT part. Uh, it's all good to praise God for that. Um, ask how God can use you. That is one of the famous prayers I love using in the morning. God, how can you use me? Let me know. Uh, use me today. Utilize me for your good. Um, and certainly a conversation with God is two-way. When you speak to God, you better be willing to listen. You know, he, uh, he'll, he'll talk to you. You know, it's, it's through different ways, different inclines in your heart. But uh, it's definitely going to be there. And you need to listen to pause and listen and reflect back on how, how that prayer was for you. You know, um, hopefully, hopefully you're living out 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Pray without ceasing, you know. Um, you got to be in that constant communion with God all day long. Uh, so let's talk about the Bible. What could you do? You could do a topical search. You know, let's say you're struggling with a specific temptation. Look it up. You can even use Google. Say Google scripture about uh, worry, you know, and all of a sudden you got lots of verses that pop up. That would be an easy one there. Uh, you could read it from the beginning to the end. Done it before. Um, it's it's not uh, for everybody, but I, I definitely think that some people would, would enjoy that. You could get into Bible studies. I'm doing a James Bible study right now with my small group and a Romans Bible study. Uh, it's amazing getting in there and talking with the guys. Uh, find devotions based on scripture. Another thing you can do is to memorize scripture. I have index cards that I write scripture on and I just flip through them probably two or three times a week just to practice and uh, sharpening myself with scripture. And finally, I personally love uh, combining reading the Bible with journaling and reflecting. Um, and certainly you can watch sermons online. That's an easy way to get some biblical teaching there. Uh, writing. This is huge for me. I love to journal. Uh, you could write a letter to God, you know, say, Lord, you know, please help me with this or that, you know. Um, you could write Bible study notes or questions down. I love doing the questions part there. Um, you could ask for wisdom for others, okay, and write about that. You could email to check in with friends and family. Um, I love writing notes of encouragement or thanks to people for organizations or businesses or just friends or family that just need a note of encouragement. And uh, finally, I don't know if you're into it, if you're a poetry person or maybe you're a songwriter, certainly that could go into writing for, uh, for your quiet time as well. Uh, anything to grow you closer to God. Anything to grow you closer to God. Um, that's me. I definitely got to have this guy right here. The coffee is essential, especially at 5 in the morning, right? Um, hey, you can go for Christian books. Find a favorite author. I love, love, love Kyle Eidelman. He is one of my favorite authors. He has a very unique voice that's fun to read. Love reading through his books. Find topical studies, you know. Um, read with a friend. Pick up a book and uh, read a chapter a week. Uh, if you have a spouse, read with your spouse. Book studies within a group, you know, we could uh, go larger than just one friend. And then, you know what? I, 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 I don't do this well enough. A lot of the books, when I'm done with them, they just collect dust on my shelf. Why not pass it along to a, a trusted friend to say, hey, I really enjoyed this book. Maybe you might like it too, okay? And then swap. Swap with other people. Go, go check out their library. Say, hey, you borrow one from me, I'll give one to you. Um, wh whatever the case there, it's going to be incredible. Maybe your library looks like this. I'm not sure if mine does. Don't leave your books like that, though. That makes them uh, a little bit tattered in the end there. Uh, accountability. Man, I have a whole, whole uh, lesson on that one, but you can meet with friends, mentors, or mentees. Ask them the hard question. You are getting real with them. You're growing together. Uh, this could be one-on-one -on -one or in small groups. And I love Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 10. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. For if either of them fails, the one will lift up his companion. But woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift him up. Find someone to lift you up. Get a little accountability there. Get a little Bible study going right here. Once again, notice the coffee. It's there. Or maybe young kids aren't allowed to drink coffee. Yeah, maybe go for a 
a Coke or something, Mountain Dew, I don't know. Uh, hey, workout or physical exercise. You think that that's not biblical? Guess again. Look at this one. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, that you are not your own? For you have been bought with the price, therefore glor glorify God in your body. I love that. You know, you can glorify Him through working out. I'm talking about strength training, cardio, stretching. Uh, hey, combine it with some Christian music, and you got the one-two combo there. That's that's amazing. And it's also a great time if you're going on a long bike ride or maybe a jog or something. You a little prayer time, maybe a walk out in nature. It's a great way to uh, to grow and uh, get your heart strong as well. I love Christian music. If you uh, can add it to your playlist, go for it. Uh, create a mixtape. Um, Christian Radio, I love listening to K-Love and 88.5. They're basically the only two stations I listen to on my car ride uh, to anywhere I go. And uh, combine it with chores, I love vacuuming with my, uh, with my uh, MP3 on, and I will just totally be jamming and like spinning circles as I vacuum, just uh, listening to my Christian music there. Obviously, combined with workouts, we've already talked about that. And you can sing. I'm not going to sing for you because I am not a singer. But you know what? God didn't bless me with that talent. Maybe he blessed you. I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping that you uh, get, get the arms up there. That's something new I've been trying recently. And uh, it's, it's totally freeing me when I'm uh, worshiping like that in church. Uh, final thoughts on quiet time. Let's just go ahead and wrap this up here. <clears throat> You know what? Reflect on what works and what doesn't work. Chart it. When I started my quiet times and mixing it up, I started journaling every day about what I did. And uh, some days it worked, some days it was just awful. And you know what? I got rid of the bad stuff and I kept the good. Um, try new ideas. If you're in a rut, mix it up. You know, if, if you are doing the same thing every day and you're like, this is just so monotonous, try something new. I've given you so many ideas here. Uh, chunk your quiet time throughout the day. I have a busy buddy um, who's an overworked engineer by the name of Mark. Mark loves chunking his quiet time. You know, he can't give God maybe a half hour in the morning because he's got to get to work on time. But you know what? He'll do a little bit over lunch. Maybe he'll do a little prayer time. You know, he just does it throughout the day. And by the end of the day, yeah, he'll spend a half hour to an hour with Christ. It's pretty cool. Try new locations. Uh, I love going out in the nature. You know, uh, my, my good friend Craig, he, he has a, uh, a backyard with one of those little babbling waterfalls. He loves going out there and just listening to the water and uh, digging into the word there just to try something new. Um, have others check in on your progress. You know, see, see if you can get accountability going there. And don't give up. Absolutely don't give up. If something's not working, try something new. Okay? Uh, I love Galatians 6, verse 7. You know, it's about reaping and sowing. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that he will also reap. And I'm hoping you guys are going to be reaping some good stuff here. Uh, because one of the great, best gifts we can give ourselves is indeed quiet time with God. Try a park bench overlooking the lake there. How beautiful is that? Well, hey. Um, I hope you've learned something today about quiet time. I hope you instill it in your life. And uh, God bless everyone. Good luck in your quest with finding the perfect quiet time that fits your needs.